All right, everybody, Brian Engelman here with the New American Media and the Unhappy Hour. Ooh, Cleveland Browns started the season yesterday against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Came up a little bit short, 18-21. to 21. There are no moral victories. There are no moral victories. But this was a moral victory. I don't know how else to say that. It can be two things at once. Oh, by the way, uh, on Facebook, we're in the Unhappy Hour Sports Show group. Do a search and join us. If you're over here, you're on YouTube or on Vidme, vidme, V-I-D-M-E dot com slash The New American Media, Facebook dot com slash The New American Media, on Twitter at American underscore media underscore Instagram dot com slash The New American Media, and Patreon dot com slash The New American Media. Whoo, the game felt different. This game was close. This game was competitive. It started off completely in the hole with a blocked punt uh, recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. And that was the difference in the game. We outplayed the Steelers except for that first special teams disaster. So if we're grading our special teams, obviously that was a pretty big mistake. And it led to problems. It led to the loss. And let's just call it for what it is. Uh, Deshaun Kaiser, once again, still looks like an NFL player. Looks like an NFL quarterback. <laughs> When's the last time we've been able to say that we have a quarterback on the Browns that looks legit? Well, this guy looks legit. No way around it. Deshaun Kaiser looks good. He's got room for improvement. There were some fluke plays, uh, you know. Missed a couple of receivers. That big, you know... We said it at the time, I was there with my friend Bob, and the Kenny Britt dropped pass for the Cleveland Browns. That one is probably the difference in the game. That was where the game was decided. That was a completely catchable ball. We haven't seen a lot from Kenny Britt in the preseason, and now we're seeing a really important demoralizing drop. We could point to a lot of stuff in this game. We could point to the things that didn't go right. Because, like I said, there's no such thing as a moral victory. We can point to Brown. We can point to Antonio Brown. We can point to 11 for 11. <laughs> you know, watching the game live, it just didn't really seem like... What's up, John? You have any comments on the Browns? Put them below. I'll uh, incorporate them into the show. Um... <sighs> It didn't really seem like Roethlisberger was getting much done at all. Uh, for the better part of the first quarter into the second quarter, it really seemed like everything was a dink and a dunk, and they couldn't figure the Browns out. And they really couldn't. I have uh, uh, Le'Veon Bell in my fantasy league. I'll tell you, he didn't get me any points. <laughs> he didn't do anything. I mean, the Cleveland Browns defense is legit. Let's just go, whatever. Let's go to something positive. The Cleveland Browns defense is legit there's no way you can watch that game without taking away the fact that uh, it's pretty incredible what we were able to do. First quarter gave up only uh, two touchdowns to Pittsburgh. I mean, game was 18-21. to 21. Seven of those points were the special team's disaster. 14 points for the whole game from that defense. All right, John, and if your aunt had, uh, <laughs> she'd be your uncle. Win or lose, no almost. No, I know. I Look, John, I agree. Uh, and by the way, if you're watching on YouTube or Vidme, I'm also live streaming on Facebook. So make sure you're part of this group, The Unhappy Hour Sports Show on Facebook. Do a search. It's a private group. As long as you're an Indians, Cavs, Browns, or Buckeye fan, we'll let you in. I started the show, John, saying there are no moral victories. But this is a moral victory. So what's up, Matt? Thank you. Uh, kudos to Matt Palantino. Kudos to Matt and a special thank you for your accommodations. Uh, had the RV there and the facilities and cooking food and we were doing trivia and stuff. So thank you, buddy. Made the experience even more fun for us to roll out and have a good time over there. Um, no, there's, there's no moral victories. Yes, win or lose. No, almost. I agree. I do agree. But man, you know, I, I think we lost this game. If I had to point to when we lost it, it was when we found out that Miles Garrett got injured. 
it really took the wind out of the sails of the Cleveland Browns from the fans. It, it, it's not the end of the world, but it stinks. You know, it stinks. Because if Miles Garrett were in there yesterday, I, it's, it's, you, you're going to be hard pressed to get me to say that we would lose that with Miles Garrett. Um, yes, Matt's saying, so far, Kaiser looks real. Yes, I need a whole bunch of Kaiser Soze memes. <laughs> you can put those in the Unhappy Hour Sports Show group. Uh, we got to share some more Kaiser Soze mean memes because I think he's going to be around for a minute. But the defense looks legit. The defense looks really good, really stout. The run defense was good. Um, I, they just played strong. They, they played well against a team that a lot of people are picking as, you know, preseason favorites to contend for a title you know one of the top handful three four or five teams in the in the conference out of all the teams they're saying you know Steelers are one of the best and we hung in there take away that first special team club and we win that game 18 to 14 okay you can't take it away I get it no moral victories fine but Kaiser came back he got some points on the board you know two touchdowns there was the interception with TJ Watt and uh Hey, credit where credit's due. That dude had a crazy catch. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know how else you're gonna say that. Uh, I mean, kind of jumping up across his body to pick a ball off that was intended uh, for deeper down in the secondary. It was, it was a great play by an athletic player. You know, kudos on that play. That was a good play. All right, Matt is guessing. He's uh, suggesting, prognosticating that we are gonna beat the Ravens by six. I'm all right with that. I see us going ten and six. I, I still do. I think when your defense is this good, as long as your special teams goes at least fifty fifty, we weren't. We got an F in special teams. You start the game off in a hole like that, that's an F. All right? Nowhere to go but up there. Against allegedly a very good team. But I got the sense being in that stadium, those Steeler fans know that things have changed, that something has changed, that it's no longer a uh that it's no longer a home game for them. I think they saw what we saw that we have a quarterback and that this team is moving in the right direction. That defense is playing with a lot more intensity. Um, the defense is all over the place. Greg Williams and that defense, I'm really looking forward to Miles Garrett and Jabril Peppers and the rest of this team. Uh, you know, I mean, we're getting some more Carl Nassib and some of these other fourth round players. Hey, let's play that. Let's play them and see what they can do. We know Miles Garrett's a stud in the meantime. It's kind of like the Cleveland Indians. Um, you got Michael Brantley injured. You have uh, Jason Kipnis injured. You have, um, uh, Andrew Miller, our long-term, our long relief pitcher injured. We, we've had a lot of stuff that, a lot of injuries that we're battling and it's given the young guys a chance to play and everybody's contributing. You know, I, th I think the best part about it is that, you know, more people get a chance to participate and get some of that valuable playing time. I, I think it's fantastic that the Browns are going to get even more experience uh, from some of those other players, now that Miles Garrett is going to be out for, you know, we'll see. I don't know that we have a, a firm timeline. I'm here in two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, let's see, a few weeks, whatever. But it looks like we're drafting well. Um, really, and, and I, I know there's a lot of people that, that follow the show closely. They don't want to hear me say this, but I'm going to put this out there. Roger Goodell, how, when is Josh Gordon coming back? You may not want to hear me say it. You might get tired of hearing me say it, and I know I get grief for putting it messages in the group, but non-performance-enhancing drug use. Getting suspended for a full season for a beer. Okay, I got it. So when does he come back? Why is he not already eligible to play? I want to see Deshaun Kaiser launching 55-yard bombs to uh, to Josh Gordon because I, th I really think we need a little bit of receiver help. Um, one of the, one of the areas I was a little disappointed in was the offensive line, uh, really couldn't get Isaiah Crowell going. They didn't hand it off to Duke Johnson either. Why? Um, Sean Kaiser got sacked a whole bunch of times, but he said, you know, that's on him. He was holding the ball a little too long and he needs to dump it off to the running backs a little quicker. Well, yeah, um, he does. He does. You know, we have talented playmakers, but we have two running backs that can get stuff done. You just got to give them the ball in some open space. You know, get them out there. Get get the ball in their hands. I don't know that Kenny Britt's going to be contributing much anything based on the preseason and how he dropped that uh, wide open one. 
you know, so it's, 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 it's a mixed bag here, but I mean, we were in this thing until the end that, that challenged play. I, I, can someone explain it to me? What it takes to get a completion in the NFL now? I thought that you have to catch it and come down and complete the whole play while maintaining possession of the ball. He didn't do that. The ball came out. It was knocked around. Theoretically, that's a challengeable play. The play was challenged, and it should have been reversed. That changes everything in that game, and we have a last-second chance for a quarterback who has a penchant for last minute, last second, and toward the end of the game heroics. At least give him a shot. Down by three. You know, that's that's a you get to the forty yard line, you got a fifty seven yard chance. Thirty five yard line, you got a fifty two yard chance. Not even saying that you need a, a touchdown to get it in there. Um you know, so it, it really is a mixed bag. We had an opportunity to win this thing. So I I can't be too upset by what happened. I know a lot of realists were not predicting much from the Cleveland Browns this year. I'm not a realist, I'm a fan. Um, but I did see an amazing defense all preseason long, and I felt that that was going to be enough to keep us in a lot of games. As I predicted, ten and six. And hey, we got Baltimore next week to figure it out. So um, I'll give thumbs down and a big boo. You need to get better to the special teams, to the referees, to the coaches and their play calling to the offensive line and running backs. I'm going to give a big thumbs up to the quarterback, Deshaun Kaiser. Hugh Jackson, in that regard, for developing him and putting him in. Let's face it, if we're going to be one of the teams that's going to be picking in the top five, top you know, top eight picks, there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks there. Do we go, need to go get a quarterback? We need to figure that out. So play the kid. So kudos to Hugh Jackson for helping this get this kid ready. He might be the real deal. He can make the throws. Uh, the stage doesn't look too big for him. He's not running around for his life. In fact, you know, my, one of my critiques on Deshaun Kaiser was I didn't like him running too much in the preseason. Now, in the NFL, I feel like he didn't run enough. He could have escaped a couple situations. A lot of sex. Yep, I agree. Lindsay, thank you for joining me in here. <clears throat> Almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. I agree. I agree. That I, I I did say this earlier. Uh, if you're just joining us, there are no moral victories. There are no moral victories. But this was a moral victory. There are some good things we can take away from this. Uh, we hung in there, punch for punch. You know, it's a little bit like Conor McGregor, the uh, severe underdog, uh, went against one of the best. And I mean, we kind of matched punches until, you know, we kind of ran out of time there. Uh, I would say maybe the difference in this, though. <laughs> while we're kind of mixing these analogies going. The Cleveland Browns started off in the hole because that stupid special teams block punt and then the, the touchdown recovery in the end zone. And we were coming on strong to close out the game, and we kind of ran out of time. That's a little bit different than Conor McGregor, where you know he came on solid. Uh, the first few rounds, I had him. I had him. I had him winning those first few rounds pretty strong. Now I wouldn't say he, McGregor wasn't blowing out Mayweather. I I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that that he was going punch for punch, hanging in there, keeping it going. Um, you know, so it got close. It, it was close. We kept it close. You know, put eight points on the board in the fourth. Pitched a shutout to the Steelers in the fourth. So we kind of crept back in there. That 21-10 went to 21-18. We had it. We had it. It was that close. But this is a young team that's going to learn from this. I, I do think we need another uh, wide receiver playmaker. I, I don't know if Sammy Coates is going to be the person. I don't know when we're going to get Josh Gordon back. I'm not giving that up. That's ridiculous. He got suspended for a beer. And, yes, he was stupid in his career. Yes, I know. I'm aware. But it's time that he plays. Um we need a playmaker on that offense. Corey Coleman was looking serviceable. He was looking good. He was looking solid. Uh, is he the guy? Can it be a number one? I don't know that he can be a number one. But, you know, he, sh he showed us something. 53 yards on five catches and a touchdown. Seth DeValve looked okay. You know, David Njoku really wasn't two catches, 20 yards. Nothing big. But, I mean, 
really, it, it did come down to that Kenny Britt drop. That was that was backbreaking. That was brutal. Um, it seemed like Matthew Days was getting way more touches than I anticipated. I know that the box score only shows three rushes for seven yards, but it seemed like when it was counting, he, they, they, they were calling his name a lot. So I don't know if what their plan is to work in with the three running backs with Kroll. And, I mean, Duke Johnson got zero carries. You know, two catches for 20 yards. I, I don't know. I, he's one of the one of the playmakers that we have. I feel like we need to we need to utilize that a little bit better. Uh, let's see what's going on. Yes, horse using hand grenades. So yes, I agree, Lindsay. No moral victories, but we're taking away a few good things from this game. I feel like we're trending in the right direction, which is a positive. Michael Nemet is saying get Miles going on the defense. Wow, I agree. <laughs> That's that's the difference in this game. The difference in this game is Miles Garrett not playing. That's your number one overall pick. That's not just the first person you got a chance to pick in the draft. That's the number one overall player. You picked him ahead of any quarterback, and you know that you need quarterback. So they had him graded very high. Uh, everybody says he's he's a good character guy. He's a leader. He's a man. Uh, you know, sometimes you draft players that are that are immature. Their children, their their adolescents, their young adults, uh, their college kids. But they're saying when he came in, he's a man. He, he comes in, he, he conducts himself like a man, and he plays like a man. And oh, do the Steelers dodge a bullet with Miles Garrett not playing this game? It's all right. A lot like uh, I'm saying to Baker Mayfield, we'll come see ya. Hopefully, we'll see you in the playoffs, pal. Plant your flag on the middle of the Ohio State. Oh, okay. See you in the playoffs, just like I'm saying to Steelers. All right, we'll see you in the last game of the year because I think we're going to be a much improved team by the end of the year. So anyway, those are a few of my takeaways. If you have anything else to type, put it in down below. And then um, I think, yeah, the, the, what else was going on? Yeah, the, the Buckeyes definitely lost a pretty tough game, got beat pretty handily by the uh, Oklahoma Sooners. We lost. It, it was pretty straight up. We got beat by a team that looks looks better. Our D-line looked good for the Buckeyes. Um, the secondary did not look good, and our quarterback play did not look good. Uh, he's still trying to do these running plays. It just, it's just it's a tired, worn-out gimmick thing. It just It's not – I don't know. I don't, I don't think it works for the team. I don't think – I don't know. I got some concerns about those Buckeyes. Um, and then finally, to round things out – the Cleveland Indians are now on, oh, geez, what is it, 19 straight? 19 straight wins? I think we're on 19 straight. Or we're going for 19 straight? Oh, we're on 18, yes. 18 straight wins, going for 19. So I'll be there at the game tonight. Hit us up uh, in the Unhappy Hour Sports Show group and let me know if you're going to be attending as well. And we will talk with you again real soon. All right, go Browns.